Hello, in this video, you will learn about famous faces who died in 1974. Walter Brennan stands out as one of the rare individuals to have received three Academy Awards for acting. His involvement in films dates back to the mid-1920s, initially starting as a stuntman and later transitioning to performing minor roles. Financial challenges stemming from the economic crisis compelled him to pursue acting more seriously, ultimately leading to substantial earnings. Tragically, Walter Brennan passed away from emphysema in September 1974 at the age of 80 at his residence in the California town of Oxnard. Tim Horton. Horton had a 24-season career in the National Hockey League, playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Rangers, Pittsburgh Penguins, and Buffalo Sabres. He was also recognized as a successful businessman and co-owner of the Tim Hortons fast food restaurant chain, notably from February 11, 1961 to February 4, 1968. Horton achieved a remarkable streak of 486 consecutive NHL regular season games. Tragically, in the early morning hours of February 21, 1974, while returning from Toronto to Buffalo in his De Tomaso Pantera sports car, a gift from Buffalo General Manager George Punch Imlock. Horton lost control of his car while crossing a bridge over the 12 Mile Creek in St. Catharines. The resulting crash caused the car to overturn, and Horton, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was thrown from the vehicle and passed away instantly. A police officer pursuing Horton's car reported that it was traveling at speeds exceeding 100 mile per Tex Ritter, an acclaimed singer and actor from the mid-1930s to the 1960s and the founding figure of the Ritter acting dynasty. He is honored as a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame. Ritter experienced a heart attack and passed away in Nashville in 1974 at the age of 68. Samuel Goldwyn played a key role in establishing major Hollywood movie studios such as United Artists and Metro Goldwyn Mayer. In 1923, he established Samuel Goldwyn Productions, adopting the principle of focusing on one film at a time while ensuring high production standards and enlisting top professionals in the industry. Director William Wyler and screenwriter Ben Hecht became permanent fixtures within Goldwyn's company. The studio's films were distributed to cinemas under the United Artists banner, beginning in 1941 under the Arcao Radio Picturist label. In 1947, Goldwyn was honored with the Irving Thalberg Award, following the lukewarm reception of the musical Porgy and Bess. In 1959, he announced the conclusion of his illustrious five-decade career in the film industry. Goldwyn passed away from heart failure at his residence in Los Angeles in 1974 at the age of 91. In the 1980s, Samuel Goldwyn's studio was acquired by Warner Brothers. Rudolf Dassler, the founder of the sports equipment company Puma, was the elder brother of Adolf Dassler, the founder of Adidas. In 2016, a feature film titled Duel of the Brothers, the Story of Adidas and Puma, was based on the lives of the Dassler brothers, with the character of Rudolf Dassler portrayed by Torben Liebrecht. In September 1974, Rudolf received a diagnosis of lung cancer. Oskar Schindler, a Sudeten German industrialist, rescued almost 1,200 Jews during the Holocaust by providing them with employment in his factories in Poland and Czechoslovakia. His extraordinary story served as the inspiration for the book Schindler's Ark and the subsequent film adaptation Schindler's List. In the final years of his life, Schindler lived in poverty relying on assistance from Jewish organizations and gifts from those he had saved. He passed away at the age of 67 in Hildesheim on October 9, 1974, and his final resting place is in the Protestant Cemetery on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Karen Silkwood was employed at the Cimarron Fuel Fabrication Site, a nuclear fuel production facility previously owned by Kerr McGee Energy Company in Oklahoma. Her role involved manufacturing plutonium pellets for nuclear reactor fuel rods, and she was an active member of the union, even becoming the first woman on its bargaining team. Tragically, while en route to a meeting with a New York Times reporter and a representative from the union's national office, she died in a car accident under uncertain circumstances. Juan Domingo Perón served as the president of Argentina 
from 1946 to 1955, and again from 1973 to 1974. In 1930, he participated in the overthrow of President Hippolito Irigoyen. Following this, he held military attaché positions in Chile from 1936 to 1937 and in Italy from 1939 to 1941, during which he met with Mussolini and developed an interest in fascist ideology. Sadly, he passed away on July 1, 1974, at the country residence of Quinta de Olivos due to cardiac arrest, resulting from worsening chronic coronary heart disease. The announcement of his death was made by his widow, Vice President Maria Estela Martinez de Perón. James Walter Braddock competed in his inaugural bout on April 13, 1926, resulting in a four-round draw. Notably, on October 17, 1928, he secured a points victory against former world welterweight champion Pete Latso. However, on January 18, 1929, he suffered a points loss to Leo Lomsky. Turning the tables on March 11, 1929, he achieved a technical knockout victory in the ninth round against former light heavyweight champion Jimmy Slattery. Regrettably, Braddock passed away in 1974 at the age of 69. Jacqueline Suzanne. In 1967, the film adaptation of the novel Valley of the Dolls was released, featuring prominent performances by Patty Duke and Sharon Tate. Jacqueline Suzanne, the author of the novel, made a cameo appearance in the movie as a journalist following the character Jennifer North's suicide. Jacqueline Suzanne sadly passed away on September 21, 1974, at the age of 56. Harry Ruby. Between 1917 and 1920, Harry Ruby collaborated with Edgar Leslie, Sam Lewis, Joe Young, and George Jessel to compose songs. In 1930, Ruby relocated to Hollywood, where, alongside his songwriting endeavors, he ventured into writing movie scripts. Alongside his primary pursuits, he also dabbled in acting for films, typically in cameo roles, and made appearances in various television series and shows as himself. Harry Ruby passed away on February 23, 1974, in Woodland Hills, California. Following his cremation, his ashes were housed in an urn placed in the chapel of the Pines Crematory Columbarium in Los Angeles. Georges Jean Raymond Pompidou, a prominent French statesman, served as the Prime Minister and 19th President of France, leading the right wing. His tenure as Prime Minister and President was characterized by France's economic growth, technological modernization, and the advancement of European institutions. Beyond his political career, Pompidou was a literary scholar, literature instructor, and art enthusiast. He established the Pompidou Center, a museum of modern art in Paris, and compiled an anthology of French poetry. Tragically, on April 2, 1974, the president passed away from acute blood poisoning. Edward Cuthbert Platt is most renowned for his portrayal of the Control Center Chief in the 1965 to 1970 NBC and CBS television series, Tighten Your Gears. He made his debut on Broadway in the Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein musical Allegro and ventured into the film industry with assistance from Jose Ferrer, who supported him in Shrike. Platt's pivotal role came in the 1960s when he took on the character of Chief in the comedic spy TV series, Tighten the Screws. Following the conclusion of the series, he took on various cameo roles. Edward Platt reportedly passed away from a heart attack in 1974 at the age of 58. However, in August 2007, an interview published on the fan side of the series, Tighten Your Gears, featured a man claiming to be Edward Platt's son, Jeff, who stated that his father died by suicide due to depression and financial struggles. Edward Platt left behind four children from two marriages and a brother residing in Santa Barbara, California. His ashes were scattered at sea. Ed Sullivan gained widespread recognition for hosting The Ed Sullivan Show, where he showcased emerging musical talent. Running from 1948 to 1971, the show became one of the longest-standing programs on American television. 
In 1996, Sullivan was honored as the 50th greatest television star of all time by the American Weekly TV Guide. In September 1974, X-rays uncovered Sullivan's esophageal cancer, although both doctors and the host family chose to keep the diagnosis from him. Believing his deteriorating health was due to a worsening ulcer, Sullivan passed away five weeks later on October 13, 1974, at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York. Duke Ellington, a highly renowned jazz musician of the 20th century, maintained an extensive schedule of travel and performances until the final months of his life. His captivating performances, characterized by inspired improvisations, captivated a large audience and garnered accolades from fellow professionals. However, in 1973, he was diagnosed with lung cancer and in early 1974, he succumbed to pneumonia. Tragically, on the early morning of May 24, 1974, just a month after celebrating his 75th birthday, Duke Ellington passed away. Charles Lindbergh achieved the historic feat of being the first person to complete a solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean. Prior to Lindbergh's achievement, British pilots John Alcock and Arthur Brown had completed the first transatlantic flight from west to east in 1919. From 1931 to 1935, Lindbergh collaborated with Alexis Carroll, a pioneering figure in vascular surgery and Nobel Prize laureate, in conducting experiments on the initial primitive blood oxygenation device, contributing to the advancement of an artificial circulatory system. Tragically, Charles Augustus Lindbergh passed away from cancer on August 26, 1974, at his residence on the Hawaiian island of Maui. Cass Elliot, also known as Mama Cass, was the lead singer of the renowned American band The Mamas and The Papas. Following the disbandment of the Mugwumps, Cass joined the newly formed group The Mamas and The Papas in the summer of 1965, during the other musicians' vacation in the Virgin Islands. Upon their return to New York, the band wrote the famous song, California Dreamin', which later earned a place in Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. Tragically, on July 29, 1974, at the age of 32, Elliot passed away in her sleep in a London apartment. The medical examiner attributed her death to heart failure and a drug test conducted as part of the forensic autopsy revealed no presence of drugs in her system. But Abbott, he embarked on his professional journey in burlesque shows where he crossed paths with his future wife, Betty Smith, collaborating to orchestrate vaudeville performances. In the early 1930s, Abbott crossed paths with aspiring comedian Lou Costello and together they formed the comedic duo Abbott and Costello in 1936. Their partnership yielded significant success, commencing with radio appearances, transitioning to Broadway, and culminating in their film debut at Universal Studios in 1940. In his later years, Bud Abbott grappled with epilepsy, which had plagued him since his youth, and prostate cancer, ultimately leading to his passing in 1974. Following his death, the actor was cremated and his ashes were scattered over the Pacific Ocean. His enduring contributions to film, television, and radio were commemorated with three stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Billy DeWolf. DeWolf joined Paramount Pictures in 1943, where he established himself as a dependable comedian. His comedic persona, characterized by a pencil mustache and an often pompous demeanor, provided a humorous counterpoint to the romantic leads in the films. One of his most notable roles during his time at Paramount Studios was that of an amateur actor who transitioned into portraying a silent movie villain in the 1947 Pearl White feature biography, The Perils of Pauline. Sadly, DeWolf's battle with advanced lung cancer led to his admission to the University of California Medical Center in Los Angeles on February 26, 1974. Tragically, he passed away there a week later on March 5th, just two weeks after celebrating his 67th birthday. Bill Finger is most recognized for co-creating Batman with Bob Kane and for originating the original Green Lantern comics. 
He is also credited with creating numerous iconic DC Comics characters, such as Catwoman, Joker, Two-Face, Robin, and others. In recognition of his significant impact on the comics industry, Bill Finger was posthumously honored with inductions into the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame in 1994 and the Will Eisner Hall of Fame in 1999. Additionally, an award presented annually to comic book creators at San Diego Comic-Con International bears his name, Anne Klein. In 1968, alongside Gunther Oppenheim, she established Anne Klein and & Company, and within 10 years, her merchandise was available in more than 750 department stores and boutiques across the United States. Her journey as a designer commenced in 1937 when she earned a scholarship to attend the Traffican School of Fashion, leading to her initial role as a sketch artist for 7th Avenue Clothing Companies. Anne Klein's accolades began in 1954 with the Mademoiselle Merritt Award, and she went on to achieve numerous fashion distinctions, gaining global acclaim. In 1967, she even patented a belt designed for the miniskirt. Tragically, on March 19, 1974, Anne Klein passed away at the age of 50 due to breast cancer at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, New York.